So you want to get started investing. You have a bit of money saved up. Maybe you've heard about Bitcoin a few times. And you know what? It sounds pretty damn interesting. Maybe you even read that someone made like a million bucks by investing on Dogecoin. Or how much money, of course, the people who made on Bitcoin who bought 10 years ago. Hey, fun fact for you, by the way, $1,000 invested into Bitcoin exactly 10 years ago would be worth around $300,000 right now. Not too bad, right? But if you are new to investing in crypto, then even simple tasks like buying your first Bitcoin can really seem like a huge deal. Plus, there will always be that little voice in the back of your head that's saying, well, but what if I lose all my money? In this video, I'm going to try to answer some of these questions for you, explain the basics of investing in crypto and the information that you need to know when you're getting started off as an investor. This is the video that I wish I had back in 2017 when I started investing in crypto. Since that time, I have made millions of dollars and I also found one of the best crypto newsletters in the industry, read by over 70,000 people every single week. And that newsletter is jam-packed full of money-making alpha on altcoins, DeFi, charts, airdrops, and much, much more. You can actually sign up to that for free. Yes, I said for free. Use the link down below. Now let's break down the topic of how to invest in crypto for beginners into some nice, concise, easy to digest steps. First, why invest at all? Well, there are many reasons that people want to invest and to invest specifically in cryptocurrency. The first and obvious reason is crypto is a highly volatile, but also a very high growth, high return industry. And let's be real. People come to crypto to make big money and ideally to make it fast. Second, people are waking up to the reality that you cannot trust the system anymore to take care of you. Retirement is looking less and less likely for an increasing number of people. And the value of money over time, it is falling, often dramatically so. If you hold cash, you're guaranteed to lose due to these factors. You put your money in a savings account. Well, you're still losing. Savings accounts, they're a joke. They don't even keep pace with inflation or money to base or not even close. You'll lose money by putting it in a savings account. You need to invest to stay ahead. It's almost not even a choice anymore. And there are many things, of course, that you can invest in. You can buy rare art, you can buy watches, real estate, obviously ever popular, very big asset class. Stocks make up one of the biggest investment classes in the world. Dividends from those make millionaires. Bonds are often considered as well. Yeah, they're boring, but they're still widely considered to be super safe. And then for the adventurous investors, we have Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But at the end of the day, you want to make an investment into something that you think is going to beat inflation. And of course, maybe even do better than that and put some nice money into your pocket, some good profits. And an investment, of course, is simply putting your money into some kind of asset that will provide a return either from selling that asset or from dividends from that asset. Now, the question that most people will have next is, well, how much do I need to get started? Well, here's the answer to that. You can actually start with any sum investing in crypto. You don't need a million dollars. You can take a million dollars if you want, or you can just start with a hundred bucks. It's also cool. The key here is no matter how much you are starting with is to go slow and to learn about this asset class before putting in any big sums of money. The temptation, I know, I know, the temptation is so strong with crypto to go all in as soon as you can, but this temptation should be resisted. You need to take Take your time. And as to how much to invest in crypto as a total dollar sum, really that comes down to you. And of course, your personal finances, the size of your portfolio, as well as your risk tolerance to getting exposure to crypto. And the golden rule, of course, to remember with crypto is never invest more than you can afford to lose because you always need to think this. Keep this in the back of your mind of investing in crypto. If I woke up tomorrow and my wallet has been hacked, will I be okay? If the answer is no, then you're investing too much. The next thing I want to address is how often to buy and really when to buy crypto. Now, for many investors, a nice passive approach to investing is probably going to work best. So you can just have an auto buy for 100 bucks of Bitcoin every Friday, as an example. Rain or shine, just dollar cost average in, think for the long term. Let's say that you have a bigger sum that you want to invest and you want to do it fast. When should you make that big purchase? When should you go all in? Again, not super advised, but you know, some people are gonna do that. Well, the ideal time is when markets are low. 
Obviously, when asset prices are significantly down, when fear is high and everyone is saying that crypto's done for, it's a scam and it's going to zero. You can also, of course, look for oversold readings on key technical indicators such as the RSI to try and help find good entries. Conversely, you do not want to buy at new all-time highs when prices have just pumped by hundreds or even sometimes thousands of percent. That's a dangerous time to buy. When greed is high is a time of danger. When everyone's feeling like, I'm a genius, seeing people posting up pictures of the Rolexes and the new cars, danger signs, warning signs. When the media is talking about crypto as the new paradigm of money, it's the worst time to buy. It's the highest risk time and the lowest reward potential time. So be warned of that reality. Because unfortunately, that is when most people are going to want to buy into the cryptocurrency markets. Now let's talk about how much of your total portfolio should go into crypto. Again, everyone needs to answer this for themselves. I can't say 3%, that's the number. 10%, that's the number. But studies have shown that just 1% of your total portfolio in just Bitcoin can actually see you dramatically outperform the 60, 40 stock bond portfolios. So you can do 59, 40, and 1% Bitcoin, for example. Some investors, obviously, much bolder. Younger investors that want to make it big, they go 100% crypto is seen by many as the best way to create wealth quickly. Personally, I like to diversify profits out of crypto into things like stocks and metals. And the thing to keep in mind with crypto is that it is risky. It is volatile. And putting too much money into crypto and you're actually gonna be exposing yourself to bigger risks. Zero exposure, on the flip side, could see you underperform massively versus those who own it. Also, one other important consideration to come in here is to understand, well, what actually is crypto? Because a lot of people actually mess this one up. There are many different kinds of crypto out there, but it boils down to this. Crypto is magic internet money. They're not physical assets like art, or a house, right? These are intangible assets, can't touch them. As well, crypto assets don't give you ownership over the protocols. So these are not stocks, right? Owning a stock gives you certain legal rights. This is not that, this is a crypto asset, you have no rights. And the way that crypto assets are treated and taxed, something to keep in mind here, often varies very much from how those traditional assets are treated. But one thing to never forget is that the tax man is going to want to be paid. Now look, different crypto can fulfill different functions. Bitcoin, for example, it's a monetary device transacted on the world's most secure computer network. We have similar networks such as Litecoin, Dogecoin, Monero. These are transactional payment currencies primarily. Ethereum, it's like a permissionless supercomputer operating system that has both a native token that operates as money and is used to access the network and pay gas fees, which is ETH, and it's also a network that allows thousands of tokens to be built on top of it. Similar networks to Ethereum, Solana, Matic, and Cardano, dozens of others as well. And then we have tokens. These are more like startup companies built on top of blockchains. Levels of decentralization vary, but basically a token launched on top of a network like Ethereum, in which in theory has some sort of use case within a platform somewhere. The best ones, of course, will have strong use cases. The range of tokens is big from meme coins, which are literally just pictures with a token, like a dog or a frog meme. They have no use case. They're generally junk although they can pump like crazy. Then you have things like GMX, which provides real yield from platform fees back to holders. So they make money and they pass it on to token holders. We have tokens that have burning mechanisms built in like uh, MakerDAO's MKR token, or a token which is needed to pay for some kind of network operation or services within a platform or ecosystem such as Chainlink's Link token. Now, all of these tokens depend, of course, on hype, users, successful teams, successful partners, successful integrations, all that stuff in order to be successful and make you money. Now, let's talk about the big question. What should I buy? Well, let's break this down into a few different categories. First, we have to talk about Bitcoin. It deserves its own category. It's the OG crypto, obviously. It's the most widely adopted. It's the most recognized crypto in the world. Basically, Bitcoin, though, is just digital gold. It fulfills that kind of function. It's probably the simplest way to understand it. If you're a casual investor, you just want to dabble, take a little, little taste of crypto to get that extra exposure, then you can just buy Bitcoin, keep it simple. That's it. Super easy. Bitcoin leads the crypto markets anyway, and it's widely considered the safest of all cryptos. And while the returns may not be as big, the risk is also smaller. Just don't go expecting some kind of, you know, million X gains from Bitcoin because that's not going to happen. It is already the 10th biggest asset on the planet gold, number one, by the way. So while I think BTC is a great investment, which is why personally it is my number one holding in my portfolio, I also understand that the returns on Bitcoin, 
they're just not going to be that insane moving forward. Now let's talk about Ethereum. This is the number two cryptocurrency in the world. Some people say it should be number one. It's a whole different conversation, I suppose, but buying and owning Ethereum will give you exposure to basically everything that is built on top of Ethereum because it is a value sink for all of those different protocols and tokens and whatever else is built on top of Ethereum. The more they succeed, the more Ethereum succeeds. So we're talking about decentralized finance, NFT, stable coins, layer twos, gaming, gambling, metaverse, AI, big data, oracles, and much, much more beyond that. Plus Ethereum has a burning mechanism built in, which is like a perpetual stock buyback mechanism, which decreases the supply of Ethereum in the long term. And of course you can stake Ethereum to earn some sweet, sweet yearly returns. Now in my opinion, in my opinion, most investors entering the market would be well served by just owning a 50-50 split of Bitcoin and of Ethereum. Gives you big exposure to the entire crypto space as together these two, two coins actually represent about 65% of the entire market cap of crypto. So holding just these two coins is probably pretty close to holding an index fund for crypto, if you will. Also, one bonus for both Bitcoin and Ethereum is that they are increasingly getting different products. We're seeing stock traded products like ETFs being launched for these cryptocurrencies. So depending on where you live, there may actually be an option to buy a BTC ETF or an ETH ETF via your brokerage account. Now let's discuss the real money maker in crypto, altcoins, bigger risk, but also potentially bigger rewards. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum are a nice bit of spice for a traditional portfolio. If you're actually looking to make it big in crypto, make millions of dollars, 1000x gains, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to need to risk life and limb in the altcoin jungle. Altcoins are basically all coins except Bitcoin and Ethereum. They broadly break down into three categories. We have big caps. These are like the top 20 coins, right? Generally, they're considered a bit safer than some of the lower cap stuff, obviously but they're also generally more boring investments that will have smaller returns. Mid caps, they range from top 20 to maybe the top 200 or top 300 by market cap. And then of course we have small caps, which are usually considered as the altcoins with under a hundred million or so by market cap. You might even look at what's like micro caps under 10 million or even under million dollar market cap coins. Those are really high risk, right? Try to think of it like this. Big caps, low risk, low reward. Mid caps, mid risk, mid reward. Low caps, high risk, high reward. Simple breakdown. But which ones to buy, Lark? What are the good coins? Well, that's a tough question. It goes beyond the scope of saying well, this coin or that coin. It's not really what this video is about. But here are some tips to look out for. Look out for big partners such as Apple or Tencent. That's a real sign of approval. What about big VCs? Is A16Z or Coinbase or Pantera on board? Because while the big VCs don't always get it right, they can definitely often anyway, sniff out the good shit from the bullshit. Look as well for good novel ideas or ideas that do something better than their predecessors, things that you can relate to and understand like, oh, that makes sense, that business model makes sense to me, I understand that. Pay attention to the teams too, that they have the experience needed to actually make this into a success. And in particular, pay attention to the token model. Is the token even needed at all? You'd be surprised at how often a token is not needed at all, or it's just like some BS token that does nothing like giving you rights to govern the platform. Governance tokens can pump, but they're not great tokens. Other things, can you get a staking reward from that token? Is that token staking reward sustainable? Does it have a burning mechanism? What percentage of the supply has been released into the market already? How much of the rest of the supply is going to be released and when? Is the market about to be flooded with coins that's gonna dilute the coins that you buy right now and send them to zero? all stuff to think about. Also understand that crypto can be really, really dumb sometimes. And look, everybody wants to get rich overnight, which is exactly why meme coins, altcoins with pictures, right? They have zero use case, but they make sometimes millions of percent returns for early investors. And you have Kyoto's coins with great teams, great use cases, and solid backers, totally ignored by the market. Well, coin with picture explodes. It's just how it is. Don't fight it. That's just the markets, man. Now let's discuss how do you actually buy crypto. Now, assuming you're not going to go the brokerage route and buy a Bitcoin ETF or an Ethereum ETF, then you're going to need to actually go out and open up a cryptocurrency exchange account. My recommendations are Kraken for those of you based in the USA and Canada. It's a great option. And for everyone else in the world, Binance, which has a lot more coins available on it. I have referral links in the description if you need an account for either of those exchanges. So in order to buy coins, First, you're gonna to need to go and complete KYC. This is know your customers. Basically, you need to verify your identity with the exchange. Exchanges have to comply with modern banking laws, so it's not a surprise. Once you've done that, you can start buying coins. 
after you fund your account, of course, either by credit card or by sending a wire transfer, which depending on where you're sending it from might take a few hours or a few days. The process though is basically the same as you go through buying a stock on a brokerage. You go, you find the coin you wanna buy, let's say Bitcoin, you enter the amount of Bitcoin that you want to buy, and then you click on the buy button. Basically it, it's a pretty easy process actually. It's not such a big learning curve from buying stocks when buying on an exchange. But the big difference between stocks and crypto is that you can easily withdraw your coins from the cryptocurrency exchange and put them into your own wallet. And that is a critical step because a cryptocurrency exchange, it is not a bank. It is not a stock brokerage. It is a marketplace for digital assets. An exchange hacks happen. Bank rupsies happen. You can't trust the exchange. For that, you will need to download a software wallet or preferably to buy a hardware wallet. That then puts you in control of your crypto, not the cryptocurrency exchange, but you, which is kind of the whole point of crypto. With great power comes great responsibility. Of course, you have to be careful with your keys when you do that. Okay, now for the part you've probably been waiting for. How do I make money with crypto, man? Well, there are three key ways people do this. First, selling your coins that you bought low when the price goes high. Seems really obvious, I understand, but most people actually buy high and then sell low. You want to win, right? So you need to do the opposite of that. Buy low, sell high. Now that involves learning some key skills like understanding market cycles, understanding sentiment in the market, understanding you need to buy when everyone else is afraid, learning technicals like the RSI to help you spot good buying opportunities, you know, spending time in the markets to find a new trending opportunities, new DeFi farms and all that stuff. And of course, then having the courage to be a contrarian and buy when everyone else is not willing to and something so fresh, everyone's calling it a scam or something so low, everyone's all oh, that's gonna go to zero. You can also make good money in crypto by buying and staking coins such as Ethereum or Cardano. Although once again, you really wanna time your buys well with this. You see, it doesn't really matter if you're getting a solid 5% a year on staking your Cardano, for example, if your total investment is down by like 75% because you bought the top, right? You wanna buy that cheap, then stake it, and then you can really juice some returns out of that. The third way is from DeFi. This is when you put your money to work on chain in different finance protocols that, for example, pay you fees for stuff like doing the service of providing liquidity. This can be a really great way to earn some extra cash with your crypto portfolio. But then again, you can also lose everything to a hack. So keep that in mind. But remember, none of what I just said matters unless you take profits at some point. Doesn't matter how good your entry was, how many coins you got from that DeFi farm, how many coins you got from staking. If you never click the sell button, you will never, ever, ever make any money in crypto. So when you are sitting on big profits, consider clicking the sell button. Turn the lizard brain off and click the sell button. Because most investors, what they do in crypto, they make a round trip. They buy their coins really low. They get great entries. They watch the coin pump to millions and then they watch it all crash back to zero. Do not do that. Write this down. Take your profits or the market will take them for you. Okay, that's it. Subscribe now. I'll see you next time.